What's going on everybody? Welcome to CS5 Unmasked, bringing you another costume tutorial. Now today we're going to be making the costume from Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. And we're going to do it for under $25. Now I do know that $25 really isn't a whole lot of money, but if I was going to buy each individual piece required to make the Part 6 costume, I would have spent well over $300. So I think I lucked out with only spending $25. So sit back and relax, and welcome to CS5's Cost Cut Costume Tutorials. Alright, let's go ahead and see what we're going to need. So we're going to need a mask and a hood, a green work shirt, a utility belt containing a machete, darts and dart pouch, and a survival knife, yellow work gloves, khaki pants, and a set of work boots. Now the boots I already own, so I'm not going to be adding that into the cost. So getting a great discount at your local store is always a win, but sometimes hitting up your thrift store or even a yard sale might be the better option. And for this particular costume, I really had to dig deep to try to find a really great deal on all of the items I needed. I even had to dig in my own personal junk drawer just to ensure I had everything that I was going to be needing. Now the shirt that I found actually cost me about a dollar at my local thrift store, and I feel that I got a pretty good deal. It already looks kind of faded and old, so I really don't have to do any weathering to it. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Using a pencil, I'm going to proceed to make marks on the shirt where all the fence post holes are going to go. Then using a nail, I'm going to poke my way through the shirt to ensure that I actually come out of the back. This is going to give me a reference point, so when I do make the holes bigger, I know exactly where they're going to be. Now using scissors, I'm going to lift the front part of the shirt up and proceed to make the holes just a little bit bigger. I'm just going to make very small minor cuts in each one of the holes. Then once you're done with the front, go ahead and flip the shirt over and repeat the same process to the back. Once all of the holes are cut, I'm going to grab a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to go over each cut mark. This is going to expand the hole a little bit to where it's actually going to look like a puncture mark. Now we're going to go ahead and accent the puncture holes. I'm going to be taking some extremely diluted black and a little bit of diluted red, mix it together and apply it around the holes. If the color does look a little weird, don't worry, once it dries, it's not going to be that noticeable. Once you're done with the front, go ahead and flip it over and repeat the same process to the back. Alright, now that it is dry and you can plainly see, it looks a whole lot better. Now we're going to apply the paintball mark. Using a pencil, I'm going to sketch it out onto the shirt. I'm going to be using this image as my reference point. Take a scrap piece of cardboard and place it under the pencil mark. This is going to ensure that when you do paint, it's not going to bleed through to the back. Now to color it in, I'm just going to be using some heavily diluted red paint. And again, once it does dry, it will look a whole lot better. Now for the pants. Now these are khaki pants that I did pick up at the Goodwill for around a dollar. And I really like the way they look, so it is going to be a shame to dirty them up. So we're going to take some heavily diluted black paint and a little rag and just kind of go crazy all over the pants. Try to get key spots where you think the most grime and dirt's going to collect. Then once you're satisfied, take a pair of scissors and kind of shred up the bottom of the pants. Go ahead and do this to both sides. Once you're all done, take a piece of sandpaper and go over each cut mark. This is really going to fray it out and make it look like it's extremely weathered and damaged. Now we're going to go ahead and dirty up the bottom of the pants that we just shredded up. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the diluted black paint to kind of simulate a lot of grime and dirt. Now for the gloves, I lucked out big time. I was able to pick these ones up at a yard sale for 50 cents. They've obviously seen better days, but for a Jason Part 6 costume, these are perfect. Now for Jason's belt, I actually lucked out again at the Goodwill by finding this particular belt. Now it looks relatively close to the one that's in the movie, other than the buckle. It has a little bit of rust on the eye holes, but I think it's a nice touch. I was able to pick this one up at the Goodwill for $1.50. Now for the machete, I actually stopped at my local Walmart 
and was able to pick up this 18 inch blade from Ozark Trails for just under $5. And the sheath is actually even included. Now I did have a tough time trying to find a survival knife for relatively cheap, but fortunately I was actually able to pick this one up at my local party city where they were having everything from 50 to 70% off. So I was able to pick this prop knife up for around $1.20. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the sheath for the survival knife. Now I'm just going to be using standard crafting foam that I picked up at Walmart for 33 cents. All I'm going to do is take the prop knife, place it on the crafting foam, and just using a marker I'm going to sketch out a small pattern. I'm going to go a bit wider than the actual knife, therefore I know it's going to fit. I'm going to cut out the pattern and just duplicate that on the other side. Using hot glue I'm going to glue the edges together and then just kind of trim off just a little bit using a pair of scissors. And that's essentially going to be the sheath for my prop knife. Now using the leftover pieces from the crafting foam, I'm going to make a small loop so that the belt can actually go through it. Now I do want to make the prop survival knife look a little more like the survival knife from the movie. So I was able to dig up some masking tape from my junk drawer and just kind of put it along the edge because I'm going to leave the part that I'm taping off a grayish silver color and the part that's not taped I'm going to paint it black and that's going to kind of simulate what the knife looks like that's in the movie. Go ahead and repeat this on both sides of the knife and then once it's dry go ahead and remove the tape. Now I know it doesn't look 100% like the one from the movie but it is just a prop knife so it really isn't that bad. Okay now for the dart pouch. Now I'm just going to be using a light tan crafting foam that I did pick up at my local fabric store which cost about a dollar. I'm going to go ahead and measure out an 8 by 8 inch section and then cut it out. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove one inch from one of the sides. Now save this one inch strip we are going to use this later. Now using the leftover pieces of crafting foam, I'm going to measure out three pieces about four inches wide and approximately seven inches long. These are going to be the pouches for the darts we're going to make shortly. Now for each pouch, I went ahead and made little markers on each side about one inch in. This is going to be my fold line. I'm going to go ahead and fold in one inch on one side and one inch on the other side. Therefore each individual pouch will be approximately two inches wide. Now using hot glue, I'm going to go ahead and seal up one of the ends. And once the glue sets, I'll go ahead and glue it on next to the other pouch and just repeat this process on the last one. Now that we got all three pouches, we can now take that one inch strip that we saved from earlier and cut it down so we can place it on the front of our dart pouch. Just using hot glue, go ahead and place a little down and then place it on top. Now to make a small loop so we can attach it to our belt. Now using a scrap piece of crafting foam, we're going to glue it to the back of the actual dart pouch. Now for the buttons that actually go onto the pouch, I couldn't find anything that actually looked close enough from the one from the movie. So I had to actually improvise. Back to the junk drawer I was able to find several Lego pieces which will actually work for what we need to do. Now it does look a little funny using Legos, but at least I'm making it a little more personalized. Now we're going to go ahead and dirty this up. I'm going to use some heavily diluted black paint and a small little rag and just kind of go over the entire dart pouch. I'm really going to emphasize going into the seams so it actually looks quite distressed and a bit weathered. Now for the darts themselves, I really couldn't find anything that looked close to the movie. So I was able to pick up these 7 inch galvanized nails that I think will actually work quite well. Now you can leave the nail head on and it'll still work out just fine, but I'm going to go ahead and cut them off. Now for the tail of the darts, I'm actually just going to be using regular paper. I'm going to cut out a few strips and using some markers, I'm just going to go ahead and color both sides. I'm going to be using red for one, green for the second one, and I'm going to leave the last one just plain white. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and make small cuts into each individual piece of paper. 
This is going to represent a small tail. Once I'm all done with that, I'm going to go ahead and fray it out. So it looks like it has a little more volume. Now we're going to make the other part of the tail. I'm just going to use three strips of paper, about a half inch wide and about five inches long, three pieces of thread, and some hot glue. I'm going to put a small dab of hot glue on one end of the piece of paper, and then put the thread in the middle of that. I'm going to go ahead and roll up the paper and then glue the end together, therefore I have a small little cylinder in the middle of the thread. Now I'm just going to take the paper that I colored and cut up earlier and just glue it to the end of the thread. Now with the small little cylinders that I rolled up, those are going to get colored with the markers as well. I'm going to attach the tails onto the actual darts. All I'm going to do is take the remaining thread and just drape it over the end of the dart and then glue it in place. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess thread. You know, that doesn't actually look too bad. Now for the mask. I was able to pick this up on eBay for less than $2. So I am going to do a custom strap, so I'm going to be removing all the snaps and buttons from the mask. But if you don't plan on doing a custom strap, leave the snaps where they are. Just remove the bottom too. So now it's time to sand the mask. The same paper I'm using today I picked up at Walmart for about a buck fifty. Okay, now it's time to paint the mask. Normally I'd be using an almond colored paint for the part six mask, but today I'm gonna go a little bit different. I'm gonna be using khaki. So this is gonna be the first time I'm ever using this color of paint, so I hope it doesn't look too bad. All I'm gonna do is put it on a rag and then wipe it all over the mask. I'm going to let it dry and then repeat this process two to three more times until I get a consistent color. Once that's all done, I'm going to take a piece of paper and rub it all over the mask. This is going to assist in removing any paint lines and kind of blend the color a little more consistently. Now the version of the mask that I'm going to be making is going to be the one toward the end of the movie after Jason kills the sheriff. I'm going to mark out the axe cut in the top of the head, and then I'm going to mark out where the bullet hole is. Now using the cutting wheel on my Dremel, I'm going to proceed to make the axe cut. I'm going to switch over to an etching bit, which I'm going to use then to make the bullet hole. Now for the chevron. The chevron I'm going to be using today, I did pick up at JDF Studios for about $1.50. Now if you aren't able to purchase one from JDF Studios, you can buy red masking tape and then make one yourself. Either way, it's going to cost about the same. Now we're going to go ahead and age and weather the mask. I'm going to start off by using some diluted yellow paint and slowly dab, rub and smear on some areas of the mask. Now once you're satisfied with that, I'm going to repeat the same process by using some diluted black paint. This is going to give it a really dingy, old, and extremely weathered look. Now we're going to add a little bit of blood splatter to the mask. And to create the blood splatter, I'm just going to be using standard red paint. As I'm applying the blood, I'm referencing tons of photos and watching certain scenes from the movie. Now I know this is not going to be 100% accurate because every single photo I looked at was just a little bit different. I still want to make it look good. Now we're going to create a little bit of burn residue around the bullet hole. All I'm going to be doing is using some diluted black paint, apply it to a small paintbrush, and just put it around the bullet hole. Now this is pretty watery, 
so it's going to want to move around pretty freely. After you let it set for a second, go ahead and take a rag and just let it soak up the water. It's going to leave the black residue behind. If you want to add more, feel free to add a little bit more. If you want to clean it up a little bit, that's going to be entirely up to you. So we will be making a custom strap. Now I already have a pop rivet gun and pop rivets and washers. The only thing I actually needed to buy was the brown elastic strap. I was able to pick this up at my local fabric store for about a dollar. I'm going to cut off two sections of strapping, one 13 inches, that's going to be the one that goes over the top of the head, and one 14 and a half inches, that's going to be the one that goes around the back of the head. Now the elastic strap that I bought is actually one inch wide, which is a little bit too big. I'm going to go ahead and cut it down so I can make it about three quarters of an inch. All right, now go ahead and grab the 13 inch strap and measure out about two inches of that. What you're going to do is you're going to fold that down and just glue the end together. Therefore, you have a small little loop. Now, this is for the strap that actually goes around the back of the head. It's actually going to be fed through this loop. Now it's time to attach the strap. I'm going to use one of my pop rivets and poke a hole in the end of the strap. I'm going to do this on both sides of the strap that goes around the back of the head and just on the top part for the strap that goes over the top of the head. I'm going to place the pop rivet through the strap and then through the hole of the mask. I'm going to apply a small little washer on the back of the pop rivet and then using the pop rivet gun, I'm going to proceed to attach the strap to the mask. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some pop rivets to the lower part of the mask where typically two snaps are going to be. I'm just going to repeat the same process as I did earlier. I'm going to put a pop rivet through the hole, a washer on the back, and then using the pop rivet gun, I'm going to attach the rivet to the mask. Okay, now for the hood. Originally, I was going to use a baklava because I was pretty much out of money, but a buddy of mine called me earlier to let me know that he was at the Goodwill and they had what he thought was a Michael Myers mask for sale. So he asked me if I was interested and of course I said yes. So he picked up the Michael Myers mask for around $5 and I was going to do a small little unboxing video just to show you guys the great deal that I got, but as soon as I took the Michael Myers mask out, I realized there was something else in the bag and lo and behold, it contained a second mask. Now this looks actually pretty close to an actual Jason hood. So needless to say, I was extremely happy. Now for some reason it had a bunch of hair around the edge, so I just ended up removing the hair just so that I could use this for my Jason hood. So let's go ahead and tally up the cost for all the items that I had to purchase. Now as you can plainly see, it is just under $25. All right, let's go ahead and put everything together and see what we got. Alright, I hope you guys really like the costume. It took a really long time to make, and I think it turned out pretty cool. Alright, if you guys got any costume suggestions you'd like me to try in the future, let me know down below. Alright everybody, this is CS5 signing out, and I hope to see you in the next video.